when it comes to countries that are developing an MMA scene right now, you probably don't think of Indonesia, but Indonesia is definitely a country that I believe that you should keep your eye on in the terms of MMA fighters coming out of that country. At the moment, they only have one UFC fighter, and that is Jekasaragi. He was signed from Road to UFC last year, despite losing in the finals. And you have, since then, seen quite a few Indonesian fighters compete on the Road to UFC tournament, as well as just bigger promotions. I believe that there's a couple of big-name Indonesian fighters fighting for one championship. But when it comes down to it, Indonesia truly does have a developing MMA scene. And if you do give it a few years, you probably will see quite a few more Indonesian fighters fighting for the UFC and bigger promotions. And the big thank you does go down to the One Pride MMA fight promotion. Because this promotion here, One Pride MMA, puts on some pretty good fights, puts on some pretty good events, and just displays the best fighters out of Indonesia. And it's a really good platform for these Indonesian fighters to fight on and really display their skills, develop up their their talent against other Indonesian fighters and just other really good Indonesian fighters and in this video I've decided to talk about the best Indonesian fighters and I am just going to start with Jekasara Gi. He is already signed to the UFC but every fighter after this is unsigned, not signed to the UFC and is a fighter that you should have your eye on in my opinion because you could see them in the UFC sometime soon and the first fighter that I'm going to talk about is Hendrik Taragan. He is 7-1, he's a lightweight. He actually does have a loss to Jikasaragi where he did lose after a minute of fighting. But aside from that, he does have some impressive wins, some impressive performances as well. He's beaten a lot more experienced opponents to him. He definitely still hasn't fought a very high level of competition yet, but if you do give this guy time, you will see him fight a high level competition and then develop into being a better MMA fighter. The next fighter is Ronel Siahan. He unfortunately was not able to display his skills when he did fight for the Road to UFC tournament last year. He did run into Ray Saruya, who in my opinion is probably going to go on to win the whole thing and is a very, very skilled Japanese flyweight with a very, very real skilled grappling base. But I don't think we should take that away from what he managed to do before that. You know, he beat an 8-5 and five opponent, 6-3, and 8-3, and three, and 2-0 and oh, earlier on into his career. And he's got a lot of KOs on the feet. He's a dangerous striker. I do believe most of his fights as well did take place at men's strawweight. I could be incorrect there, but I know there's a lot of men's strawweight fighters in Indonesia. So if you ever see a big promotion introduce a men's strawweight division, Indonesia probably would have some of the better fighters from there. But Ronald Siahan, a great flyweight prospect. He's 7-1. He's coming off that loss to Ray Saruya, but that doesn't take away the fact that he is a fantastic striker. And if he can implement and work on some grappling and striking and, and uh, takedown defense, you will see him in a bigger promotion in the future. Another one is Windry Patilama. Same sort of reason, you know. This guy was 8-0 going into his fight against Shin Haraguchi. Once again, I think Shin Haraguchi is going to win the whole thing at Road to UFC. But you, once again, cannot take that away from who he beat before that. He beat a 6-0 opponent, 6-1 opponent, and 4-0 opponent. And he's a very dangerous fighter, but he just did not have the wrestling defense for Shin Haraguchi, who is a world-class wrestler, a truly world-class wrestler. I believe he's like an under-21 world champion in freestyle wrestling. Unbelievable wrestling base. And Windry Patilama just wasn't able to defend the wrestling that Haraguchi did bring to him. But Windry Patilama, you know, there's a lot of other guys on Road to UFC that he probably could have potentially beaten. So I think Woodrey Patilama is a guy to keep your eye out for. I think now that he's moved down to lightweight from welterweight, yeah, he could sign a little bit more success. He could develop his skills a little bit more. I do like Woodrey Patilama in the future. Great record, 8-1. and one. Give him time to develop, beat some better levels of competition, and you could see him in a bigger promotion. Same goes for Rio Toto. He's actually a male uh, strawweight prospect, but I think if this guy did move up to men's flyweight he would also find success but he's got a couple of really good wins like three wins by submission which you don't necessarily see too much from indonesia a lot of these guys are strikers but he's got three wins by submission very very good fighter as well beaten you know he's been a pretty good level of competition as well for the experience that he's got he's only got five pro fights and all of the wins that he's got aside from one were over fighters with winning records so not a bad look too much for rio toto same sort of goes with Adi Pramana. He is 9-1. and one. He's a male atomweight fighter. You see what I mean? Like, these uh, guys from Indonesia, they are pretty small. Like, you know, if they can fight a men's atomweight, that is crazy. I don't know if he won this fight against Faisal Lasse, but Faisal Lasse is uh, the next fighter on the list that I was going to talk about. But men's atomweight fighters. I mean, do you see this anywhere else? Um, I mean, not really at the end of the day, but... 
It means Atom White, he's had a lot of success as well. He's beaten a lot of guys who are undefeated. 3-0, 2-0, 3-1 and records as well. Beaten 8-3 opponent recently. Potentially beat Faisal Lasse, who was 8-2. I mean, this guy would probably have to put on a little bit of weight to fight at 125 pounds, but... I mean, already got a pretty good record, already beaten a few good guys. He would have to put on a bit of weight if he's fighting at 105 pounds to fight at 125. But definitely a guy to keep your eye out for um, in Indonesia. I think he could be a very good prospect for men's flyweight or if men's um, straw weights ever come out. I think he could be a prospect as well for that weight class. Faisal Lasse is 8-2. and two. Once again, it means Atom Weight. I was just talking about him because he fought Ade Pramana. Same sort of thing. He's actually fought a bunch of really good opponents himself. You know, 2-0 and o early into his career. 4-2 and two early in his career. 4-1 and one early in his career. 2-0, and 5-2, and 7-1 and one win recently. Maybe he beat um, Ade Pramana. This fight, I believe, has actually already happened. Oh, no, no, no. I'm really confused. <laughs> I don't think the fight has already happened, actually. It's coming up in August. That was really embarrassing. But anyway, Faisal Lasse, a guy to keep your eye out for, means atom weight fighter, which is absolutely insane, uh, to be honest. I mean, maybe it has finished. I'm just really confused, man. I'm recording this video at midnight because I'm waiting for the inner way fight. Anyway, we'll move on. Alperis Montaco is 7 and 3. He's a featherweight, 5 foot 7. Once again, beating some good guys recently, 11 and 5. 4-0 and, and 7-2. And pretty good wins. He has lost to some pretty bad opponents early into his career. But, you know, this you can kind of delete these losses from your record with a bit of a win streak. Maybe he rematches a couple of these fellas. Get those wins. <laughs> get those losses overturned in a way. But he's on a four-fight win streak right now. You know, he hasn't fought in 2023. But, you know, 7-3 and three record. Pretty good record. You could see him in the future. Billy Pasilatan is a 10 and 3 fighter. He was actually on against Jin Yushiyi on Road to UFC. Got dominated by Jin Yushiyi, which is unfortunate. But Jin Yushiyi, man, he's just a savage, dude. He just went out there and went crazy. And um, he, yeah, he's, he's actually did um, fight a couple of good guys in his career early on. But um, once again, you can't take it away from what he did. He was actually fighting at men's straw weight. He was smaller than Jin Yushiyi in that matchup. You know, he's got really good wins again. 10 and 1, 9 and 3, 4 and 3, 5 and 1, 5 and 3, 6 and 1. Really, really good wins that he's getting. Most of these wins as well are by finish early on into their fight. So I think Billy Pasilatan is once again another fighter that you could definitely have your eye on. Definitely a guy that could be a good flyweight prospect in the future for the UFC from Indonesia. And the same goes for Ipram Ginting. I believe he fought at 135 pounds when he took on Dario Mercy Zawipasi. And Dario Mercy Zawipasi fought him like Kamsa Chimaev. I'm going to be honest, dude. He just ran out there. Took him down immediately. Choked him out immediately. Uh, unfortunately, Ginting just had absolutely nothing for him, which was a shame. But once again, you can't really just take away what he's done before then. Because once again, he had fought a couple of good opponents. Mostly beaten them within the first two rounds as well, which is impressive. 3-0 win, and he beat a 1-0 guy when he was 1-0. Doesn't really have the level of experience that maybe some of the other guys that, that I talked about in this video do. But once again, not a guy that you should ignore. I think this is another guy that you could see represent Indonesia in the UFC, like Jekasari Gi is doing right now. And it is also worth noting as well that um, it's not going unnoticed. The Indonesian fans are like a pretty decently sized fan base. Jekasari Gi has blown up. He's now got 128,000 followers on uh, Instagram, you know, like, like, they, like, Indonesian fans are behind this guy, man, so it's going to be interesting to see when he makes his debut, I'm thinking maybe he's going to be fighting in Singapore, potentially, I think that would make sense, but, yeah, Jekasari Gi, very much a real superstar in Indonesia, because he's in the UFC, and I would hope that the UFC is taking notice of Jekasari Gi stardom, and even as well, just in a, in a, in a way, Angel Jubli stardom as well, the Angel Jubli blew up from being on Road to UFC. He got like 250,000 Instagram followers overnight, pretty much, uh, because Indian fans have been looking for an Indian fighter to be in the UFC, and uh, Angel Jubli is that to them. So, yeah, as I said, man, you could see a lot more Indonesian fighters come up in the future. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Very much a developing sort of country for MMA, because I believe MMA is a very new sport to them, and there's a lot of guys coming up from Indonesia that I think you should keep your eye out for. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And with all that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.